Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about a trick that's used in competitive programming sometimes. And like I'm going to be calling it static to dynamic, but I guess it has like some different names. But like the main idea is that when we have some data structure, we that that's which is static, we will be able to convert it to a dynamic version of it in logarithmic time by not changing anything in the previous structure. So in a way we can think of the static structure as a black box and by the following trick, we would be able to like make additions to it in a relatively good time. So yeah, this video will probably be shorter because the trick is quite simple. So yeah, let's just go straight to it. So I mean, the main idea is, as I said, we basically have some structure which is static. By static, I mean that we have only two operations on it. The first one is the initialize or the building of the structure, which will be in time O and some function of n, let's call it g of n. So yeah, I mean, we first build the structure in some O g of n time, and then we'll be able to answer some queries in O f of n time. So in, in other words, like we have some set of elements or something that we are building the structure on, and then we are gonna be able to, like after building the whole structure, we are gonna be able to answer a lot of queries in some good time. And I mean, like, the main problem with this is that we can't really add elements to the structure, and sometimes you need like a dynamic version so that you can like add elements to it. And the main idea of the trick is that when we use it, we'll basically get a new structure, which will be like the dynamic version, and we'll be able to perform additions in amortized time equal to O G of n multiplied by a log. So basically, it's like almost the same one, but with this additional logarithmic factor. And also, we will be able to answer the queries, but again, with this additional factor. So I mean, like, it's basically the same as before, but like with addi one additional log factor, we will be able to answer the queries dynamically. So in other words, we would be able to do additions. Like, that's just an additional query. OK, so now how to actually solve this? The main idea, uh, actually before that, let me first give two examples of problems where you are probably going to need to use a structure like that. So the first one is related to strings, and basically you have like some queries and some dictionary which is initially empty. The first query is you add some string s to our dictionary, and the second one is basically given a string t, which will be in other words the text we need to find the number of words in the dictionary that appear in this text t. So yeah, I mean, if this was a static problem, so in other words, if we had the initially the whole dictionary, then it would have been relatively easy to solve the whole problem with just Ahkorasic. In other words, like, we get the Ahkorasic, I mean, we, we build it for the whole string, then we build a tree on the failed links, and then when we just go through the path that's basically made by this text t, we can easily answer these queries. But I mean, the problem is that like the queries would be in time O of t, O of the length of t. But like, again, it's kind of troublesome because uh, we need to have all the words initially. So yeah, I mean, using this trick, you would basically just use the accuracy calls, our static structure, and you would be able to just create a dynamic version of it. So you would be able to solve this with a one additional log factor, which is like a pretty neat trick in my opinion. So that's what, like one example where you would use it. I'm not going to share the solution in details because I think it will be more interesting for you to try after like hearing the whole trick to either implement it or like think about how exactly you would solve it. But yeah, let's continue with the other problem. So the other example I thought of, that's like just a very generic one. We have a set of coins. The first query is add some point to the set. And the second query is just given some query point, find the closest or the furthest one to this point. And I mean, like, there are some different approaches to solve this. But most, not most of them, but like, I mean, the easiest ones that you would normally implement are just static. You would have a set of points and you would just build a structure on them. And then, like, you just get the farthest point using this structure. One example would be like, KD trees. Again, I mean, like, in practice, KD trees are, m might be, like, linear in time, but, like, uh, not in practice, but, like, in worst case, KD trees might be linear in time, but, like, in practice, they're relatively fast, so 
that's one example. But there are also some logarithmic time algorithms. And yeah, I guess like that's another problem where using the static structure, you can easily get a dynamic solution with just additions and queries. But like, I guess you got the main idea where basically sometimes it's very easy to get a static version and then the dynamic version might require some complicated data structures like inside of structure and I mean using this trick basically you can use the static version as a black box and answer dynamic queries. So yeah let, let's just get straight to the trick because it's not that hard. I'm first gonna start with the main setting which is like we are gonna maintain a logarithm and sets but by sets I mean like a set which contains all the elements. I mean like in every set, we would have like some elements and the structure that's built for those elements. And I mean, like, we have two invariants. The first one is that every element will appear in exactly one set. I mean, like, basically, we have some additions. So we would have some set of elements. And each of those elements would be in one of those logarithm number of sets. And then the second, which is like the more important part, is that the first, uh, the first set would will have size one, then the second one would have size two then the next one would have size 4 and so on until like every power of 2. Basically like also have in mind that every set might be empty and initially all sets are empty. So like in other words our second invariant would be that the set number k or like the kth set like the first one is zero set then this is the first one then this is the second one will either be empty like initially everything is empty or it will contain the structure for some two to the power of k elements. So in our words, like, we just have a bunch of structures that are, that such that every structure will be built on two k elements for some different case. And also like every element, as again I have to mention this, will be in exactly one set or like structure. Okay, so I mean, after I explained the addition, the query will be actually very simple, so I'm just, just gonna start with the addition. So yeah, I mean, imagine that we have done some operations or some queries, and now we have the following set sizes. Again, I mean, like we are keeping the invariant where uh, every set has either two to the power of k elements or it's empty. So yeah, I mean, now we want to add an element. So what we are gonna do is basically we are gonna find the smallest empty set. Or in other words, like we would have some prefix of sets that are full, so they will have like two to, power, two to the power of zero, two to the power of one, and so on elements, and then we will find some empty set. In this example, like we have one which is full, then we have two which is full, then we have four which is full, and then we find like this set which must have, should have had size eight, but like right now it's empty. Know that maybe there will be some sets that are full that are after that, but like we are just we just want to see how the procedure would look like when we have some of the sets. So yeah, I mean the main idea is to just find the first empty set. And I mean, so we are basically gonna add this new element to this set. But now, I mean, we had that we said that we will keep the invariant that every set will be empty or it will have size two to the power of k for some k. So yeah, I mean here the main idea is that instead of just adding the new element to this empty set, we'll, we are also going to move all elements from the previous set to this one. Or in other words, we are going to delete the first one, the second one, and the fourth one, and we are going to move them to this new set. Know that this will also delete the static structures that we have already built, but this is still OK. And so now let's count what will be the number of elements in this new set. So it will be 1 plus 2 plus 4, which are all powers of 2 that are less than the current one. So this will be like, when we look at it in binary, it will be like 1, 1, 1. And I mean, if we actually found out that the first one was like some other set, I mean, the first empty set was somewhere further, then this binary, like the binary representation of the total number of elements would have been 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and so on. Or in other words, it would have been 1 less than the required power of 2. However, note that we are also adding the element from this addition. So if we get like the total number of elements before plus the new one that we are adding, we are going to get, uh, like, I mean, if we just combine everything and we, put, uh, and we put it in this new set, 
we are going to just get an 8, which is fine, because we are still keeping the environment. So yeah, I mean, then like the first three sets will become empty. But like this one will be fine. And I mean, like, on the next update, we are certainly going to just put the element on the first position, because like, I mean, the first one will be empty. We are just going to put the new element on the first position, and it will be fine, because we are keeping the invariant. And we are just going to simply build the structure on the one element. So yeah, getting back at our point, we basically have like, I mean, we basically moved the previous elements to this, to this new bucket, which will now have eight elements, which is fine by in the invariant. And what we are going to do is basically we are build a new structure again on the whole thing. I mean, we are just going to iterate through all of the elements and build the structure in the static approach, which basically was in OG of n time. But this time it will be like OG of 8, because like we just have 8 elements. And we are going to build a structure for this position. So yeah, I mean, like in other words, we are just going to iterate through all elements, and we are going to move them to this bucket. So this may actually seem like it would be like a very bad complexity, but we are going to analyze it in a minute or so. And yeah, I mean, like the main idea is that we f just find the first empty set, and then we move all previous full sets to this new set, and then we also add this new element that we are adding in this query to this set. And this way, we again would have a power of two, but a slightly larger power of two. And we are just going to build this new structure that will basically sit in this new bucket. And this way, we are going to empty like the previous positions. So yeah, I mean, that's like the general idea. It's relatively simple, because you basically, one way to implement is it is just have like a vector of the elements in every bucket. So basically you can create like 30 buckets initially or 30 empty vectors. And you just iterate, have one loop to find the first empty vector. And then you go through the previous vectors and you just like move all of, of their elements to this empty vector, which is like the new one. And then you just build a structure as a part, like instead you want to only keep, so, so yeah, I mean like you will have the 30 vectors, but also you will have like 30 structures. So in other words, like you will destroy the structures for the previous positions and you will build this new structure for this position. And I mean like it's linear in the number of, not linear, but like G of, with complexity G of N, depending on the number of elements in the previous ones. So yeah, I mean, now how to analyze the complexity. It's actually relatively simple. Think about every element and the number of blocks in which it can appear. Basically, I mean, the most troublesome part is when we are moving something. But you can see that we are always moving an element to something to its right. So in a way, we worst in, in the worst case, we will have some element which first was in the first bucket, then we, m then we moved it to the second one, then we moved it to the first one, and so on until the last one. But I mean, we just have a logarithmic number of buckets. So every element will appear in at most logarithmic number of element, uh, logarithmic number of buckets. So in other words, we were basically gonna, I mean, if we just combine all of the, uh, if we just calculate the total number of movements, it w it's bounded by n log, because uh, we have n elements, and every each one of them will move logarithmic number of times. And I mean, like, basically, this means that we are going to, I mean, and like when you try analyzing it based on element, you can see that every element will appear in at most logarith logarithmic number of initializes. So in other words, th that from here it strictly follows that basically we would have gn multiplied by logarithmic time amortized complexity. Not that, I mean, some of the updates may be, may be very slow, but like Overall, the complexity would be pretty good because, it, I mean, it's amortized g of n multiplied by log of n, mainly because every element will appear in at most a logarithmic number of n blocks or buckets, whatever you want to call it. And I mean, like, basically, this way we have our structure and every element will appear in exactly one of those buckets. So, in other words, we have a very cool thing that we can just, when we answer queries, we can just go through all blocks and query each of the structures separately. So in other words, 
imagine that we have built a square and we have some new query and we just go through the blocks. We see that the first couple of them are empty, so we won't go through them. Then we have this one, and we are going to query the structure inside of this one with our point. So in other words, we will have f of n here to query from this block. Then we will have f of n to query from this block. Then f of n to query from this block, and so on. But in other words, worst case, we will have a logarithmic time multiplied by f of n, because we have logarithmic number of blocks. So yeah, I mean, basically, I think I just wrote here that the query would be simply go through all blocks that are non empty and just query separately and then combine the answers. So here I have to note that this trick probably won't be able, I mean, you could probably use it in most cases, but m there may be some cases where you can't easily com like merge the answers from the different blocks. But I mean, in the two cases here, like for the first one, as we basically it was about strings. So I mean, you can easily merge the answers because you're interested in the total number of strings that appear in S. So I mean, every string appears in exactly one block. So you can just sum the answers from all blocks. And this will be just your combine. So the combine in this case would be just a plus. While in the second one, you have like a bunch of these structures, which are like the KD trees. And we will just query each one of the KD trees. And you would get like the best answer which will be like either the minimum or the maximum based on the distance. So yeah, I mean like generally this is the trick. It's relatively easy to implement. You just have to you just like use 30 vectors and 30 structures and I mean it's just two for loops, so it's relatively simple to implement. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.